So for part A on this problem, we want to find the y-intercept and explain its meaning. So any time a function is given, such as this one, we want to first identify what the variables mean in this problem. So our input is the variable x. And if you read, read along here, we see that x is going to be the cost of a ticket. And the output, in this case, instead of y, is actually the variable p. And again, sometimes you have to reread the problem a second time to identify your variables. But here we see that p represents the profit, but make sure you pay close attention because it's not the profit in dollars, but the profit in hundreds of dollars. So I'll say profit in hundreds. All right, so we've identified our variables. So that's going to help us in the interpretation portion of this problem. So we know that we want to find the y-intercept. So in this case, the y-intercept would be equivalent to the, the p-intercept. And anytime we're looking for the y-intercept, we're always going to find that by letting x equal 0. In other words, we're going to substitute 0 into our function in place of x. So that's essentially the same as finding p of 0. Well, when you do your substitution, substituting 0 into our function, we'll get an output value here of negative 88. So my y-intercept is negative 88. But now, what does this actually mean in the context of the problem? Remember, we were substituting in 0 in place of x. And x was the cost of a ticket. So we're saying that if a ticket costs $0, in other words, that's like letting people in for free. If this um, play is free, then we have an output of negative 88. So that means that the club is actually going to be losing money because we have a negative value. And remember, this is not actually just negative $88, but rather it's negative $8,800. So we could say, if the cost of a ticket is $0, then the club will be losing $8,800. Now one area where I would uh, encourage you to be careful on this particular problem especially is when we say we want to let x equal 0, a lot of times people make the mistake and they think that that actually represents 0 tickets, as if we're not selling any tickets. But you have to realize that that's going to be incorrect and once again you can tell that if you've taken the time to write down your variable key that x doesn't represent the number of tickets, but rather x is the cost of a ticket. So we're saying if we're charging zero dollars for a ticket, in other words, if the tickets are free, then the club is going to lose $8,800 or $8,800. So now let's move on to part B, where we want to find the x-intercept, x-intercepts. So remember, to find the x-intercepts of a function, we're going to let y equal 0. So in this particular function, since our y value is represented by p, or profit, we're going to be letting p equal 0. So we're looking at where the profit's going to be 0. So that will give us the equation 0 is equal to negative x squared plus 46x minus 88. And we need to solve this quadratic equation. So we have several options when you're solving a quadratic equation. You can always try to factor the equation. You can complete the square. And you can also do the quadratic formula. So for this particular example, I'm going to demonstrate uh, the method of completing the square to help you review that particular method. So when you're completing the square, you, you first want your leading coefficient to be positive 1. So in this case, because our leading coefficient is a negative 1, we would essentially just divide both sides of this equation by, by negative 1. So we'll have 0 is equal to positive x squared minus 46x plus 88. Now if we could go ahead and, and factor here, if you want to try to factor, you can. But again, I'm going to go ahead and, and assume that maybe you couldn't factor and show you completing the square. So now we want to take the c value, we want to move it to the other side um, so that we can just focus on the, the two terms that have the variable. So if we'll subtract 88, and now we're ready to physically complete the square. 
In other words, we're going to add a constant to the right-hand side of the equation so that what I have here on the right will be factorable. But of course, I recognize that whatever I add to the right-hand side, I also need to add to the left-hand side to keep this equation in balance. Remember, what you're going to be adding is the b value divided by 2 and that quantity squared. So in this case, we have negative 46. So you'll divide negative 46 by 2, that would be negative 23, and then you'll square it, and that's what you'll be adding to both sides. So 23 squared is 529. We'll add a positive 529 to both sides. Now we've actually completed the square, so the right-hand side, this trinomial that I have on the right-hand side, should factor. And in fact, it should be a perfect square. So if you were to factor this, it'd be x minus 23 times x minus 23, which can be written x minus 23, the quantity squared. The left-hand side will just subtract 529 minus 88 will give us 441. And so now we've gotten to the point where we can use the square root method. We can square root both sides in order to solve this quadratic equation. Don't forget that's always going to give you a plus or minus when we square root. The square root of 441 is going to be 21. So now we have a positive and a negative 21 is equal to x minus 23. And then I will come over here. Adding 23 to both sides, we get a statement that looks like this. x is equal to positive 23 plus or minus 21. So that means we have two different answers. Our first answer would be 23 plus 21, which is an answer of 44. And then our second answer would be 23 minus 21, which is an answer of 2. So it looks like right now the x-intercepts that we just found are positive 2 and positive 44. So we have two x-intercepts. And if you think graphically for just a second as to why this would make sense, looking again at our function here, thinking of it graphically, we know it's a parabola. We know it's a parabola that's going to be opening down. We also know that we have a negative y-intercept here at negative 88. So without spending a bunch of time on my graphing calculator, just a, a quick little sketch here, you can see a parabola that looks like this indeed would have two x-intercepts. It could cross the x-axis two times. So our answers do seem feasible. So now the question is, what do these answers actually mean? So remember, these are x values, and looking back at our variable key, x was the cost of a ticket. So we're basically saying that these are both costs. So if a ticket costs $2 or if a ticket costs $44, then what does that mean about our profit? Remember, we were letting y equal 0. In other words, we were saying that the profit would be 0 here. So if the cost of a ticket is either $2 or $44, our club makes a profit of 0. In other words, there is no profit. So we could also say that this is when the club is going to break even. So when the tickets cost either $2 or $44, so $2 or $44, the profit is $0. In other words, the club breaks even. They're not making a profit, but they're also not losing money either. Those are our break-even points. And that would be the meaning of the x-intercepts. All right, let's go on to part C. How much should the club charge to maximize profit? And what is the maximum profit? So again, if we take a look at this function graphically, we can learn a lot about it. We know it's a parabola that opens down. We have this negative 88 for the y-intercept. We just found the x-intercepts in the previous part of the problem. 
So we, knew, we know now that I have an x-intercept here at 2, and my other x-intercept is 44. So for the beginning part of this, we're interested in maximizing the profit. So looking at your graph, you can ask yourself, where does the maximum occur? Well, if it's a parabola that opens down, then we can see that we're going to end up having a maximum here that occurs at the vertex. So essentially, we need to figure out what the vertex is of this parabola. So just a reminder again about your variables. Rather than saying we have an x and a y, in this problem, we're inputting x, the cost of a ticket, and we're outputting a p, a profit. So when we compute the vertex point here, if you think of it as an ordered pair, we're going to have an x value and we'll have a p value. All right, so you have actually several different methods of finding the vertex. A common method would be using the formula for the vertex, which is going to be negative b divided by 2a, or the opposite of b divided by 2a. So our b value here in our profit function is 46, so negative 46, divided by 2 times our a value, which is a negative 1. So that would give us a value of 23. Now remember the units for this, look back at your variable key, this was $23, which was the cost of a ticket. So we're saying if the club charges $23 per ticket, they will maximize their profit. But let me also mention another way of finding the vertex for this particular problem. If you didn't want to use the negative b over 2a formula, since we did already go to the work of finding the x-intercepts, you know that that vertex is going to lie right in the middle. It's going to be on that axis of symmetry, which is going to be right in between those x-intercepts. So you could have also calculated the midpoint between 2 and 44, if you remembered your midpoint formula, 2 plus 44, all divided by 2. You're just averaging those values. And you can see, oh yes, that's 46 divided by 2, indeed is 23. That's not going to give you the entire vertex, but rather the x value of the vertex. That would work as well. And finally, the last part of the problem asks for the actual maximum profit. So again, taking a look at your vertex, we found the x value of the vertex, but the profit is going to be the y value of the vertex, which just means we need to take this x value of $23, and we need to substitute it into our profit function. In other words, we need to compute p of 23. You can use your calculator to do that number crunching. So plugging 23 in, substitute 23 into your profit function. And it looks like we get an output of 441. But just be careful. Look at your variable key one last time. Remember that p, the profit, was not in dollars, but rather it was in hundreds of dollars. So this is telling us that the maximum profit that the club can make, the maximum profit, is actually $441,000, or in other words, $44,100. So that maximum profit will be reached if the club is going to charge $23 per ticket.